Which you guys got another video here for you. In this one we're going to be looking at how we can dual boot Windows 10 with Linux Mint. Now you can use whatever Linux distro you want to use but we're going to be doing Mint in this case. So we've got Windows 10 here and the first thing I'm going to do is uh, take a look at the drive itself. So I want to go to File Explorer here and uh, once we get there uh, we want to go to uh, this PC and inside here you can see we have one C drive and it's 100 gigabytes. Now you may have one drive that's got plenty of space in it but you need to partition this off to give you some other uh, space so you can install uh, Linux onto that. So what we're going to do here is going to right click on this PC here and go to manage this will open up the computer manager once you've got this open what you want to do is go into where it says disk management once that populates you should see your C drive here so what we're going to do here is we're going to right click on this and we're going to shrink this volume down so that's going to query the volume and uh, start to give you the shrink space that you require now obviously what this is doing here is going to average out how much space you've got and then give you uh, the amount of space you want to do but you can type in whatever you like here so we're just going to put 20 gigs in here uh, for now and that will be good enough for this video but you can put in whatever you like here so you don't have to do this part if you already have a partition but you can see roughly we've got around about 20 gigs here but if you've already got a partition you can use that also uh, if you format it but now we have unallocated space that's good enough ready for our distro that we're going to install onto that so we're going to close this off now I'm going to restart the system and boot up uh, into the BIOS because we need to change the BIOS to boot to a CD or a USB flash drive depending on what we've got our uh, Linux distro on. So let me do that right now. So I'm just going to quickly restart the system. Now I was tapping F2 on my keyboard. Now this is an older style uh, BIOS that you may have. Uh, so if you have got this one then all you need to do here is use your cursor keys which is those little arrows um, and then use these to go across the top here and then as you can see here um, under boot we have CD-ROM uh, also we have hard drive and uh, removable devices depending which one you want to select so if you haven't got this type of BIOS I will also show you how you can do that in the UEFI and uh, that will also be in this video as well uh, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to select the CD-ROM drive here by highlighting it and then we're going to hold the shift key down and tap on the uh, plus and equals uh, key on the keyboard so it'll be the plus key that we need and this will move that up just like so now we need to save and exit by pushing F10 on the keyboard and make sure that we've got our media in. We're going to be using a CD here but if you're using a flash drive you can also use that as well. So we're going to push F10 and then say yes to save this configuration. Now you're going to need to change the boot order in your UEFI BIOS and you can see the instructions on the screen right there. Click any of those uh, keys to get into the BIOS. Then we're going to click on settings here and then boot. This is on a UEFI BIOS. Mine's an MSI uh, BIOS. Yours may be different then we're going to select boot mode select and then click on that and once we've got that open we are going to then select legacy plus UEFI I'm going to close that off and then we're going to click on boot option 1 click on that and then we're going to change the boot option to boot to our USB hard disk or you can change it to USB CD or DVD then we're going to click on advanced and from there we're going to click on USB configuration inside USB configuration we're just going to make sure legacy USB support is enabled and uh, we want to make sure that is uh, safe so we're going to click yes to save this configuration now click save and exit now we want to push enter and we're going to start Linux Mint okay so that's the next step we want to do Now you may find that it does take a bit of time to boot up, just be patient at that stage, just let it get to the desktop here, as you can see. So 
So once you're here, what you want to do now is uh, you can see here install Linux Mint. We're going to click on this. Next thing you've got your language you can choose and there's a, a load of different languages you can choose. We're going to have English here. Click continue. Now you can see what it does. It gives you uh, a suggestion here that you need at least 9.5 gigabytes available drive space. We've given it 20 so that's ample. There's no internet connection as of yet but we could set that up if we wish. I'm just going to continue this by clicking continue. Okay, so this is the area once you get here where you want to start to pay a bit more attention to what's going on. Now you don't want to click on the erased uh, disk and in install Linux Mint because this will delete everything on that drive including all your Windows operating system. So we definitely don't want to do that. Okay, We want to come down to where it says something else. Click on this. Click continue. Okay, so now it's opened up this here and you can see we have our free space here and this is our uh, Windows as you can see here. So you've got your environment bootloader here and you've got your Windows which is on this one. This is our space ready for our, our Linux Mint. So if we see this here you can see that we have our free space. We can double click on this and this box will pop up and ask you to create a partition. What we want to do here is we want to make sure that we uh, create a partition. So what I'm going to do here is let's just make this uh, say for instance 18,000 here that'll do. I'm going to make this primary and also I want to make this, uh, let's see, x4 and uh, we're going to make this uh, the root and click OK. And uh, what we want to do here now is right click on this one or double click and uh, we're just going to make this our swap area. And then what we want to do next is click on here and install Linux Mint onto this here. As you'll see here it'll come up. Click continue. And uh, we're just going to leave this as is but you could uh, literally select your country if you want. But I'm just going to leave it in New York for now. Again, I'm just going to change this to UK here, that'll do. And the name, I'm going to make this Brightech. So now we need to create a password, so I'm just going to quickly do this. And I'm just going to do a little short one because I, I don't plan on keeping this onto this system. And we're just going to quickly uh, log in automatically, that'll be fine. Push continue and this will now start to copy the files across and we'll just let this continue to install so now we just need to remove the media uh, from the computer so it can boot up okay so uh, once you've removed your media you should uh, be presented with this grub menu once you've uh, booted up as you can see here we've got Linux Mint and also Windows recovery. I don't want this uh, look here. I want to go back to the Windows menu with Windows 10 and Linux as an option rather than having this as an option. Uh, so what we're going to do here is boot up to uh, Windows recovery environment and uh, boot to that. So I'm just going to push enter. Just let this load in. Uh, 
Okay, so now we're at our desktop of Windows, and what you want to do here is you want to get yourself a copy of Easy BCD, and uh, this is a a free tool that you can get. Just put Easy BCD into uh, the search bar there, and there is the actual uh, download link for it and you can download it from their main website as well okay now you will need to register this so for instance C plans click on that and then you will see here a non-commercial uh, free version which is what you can use here okay if you're a non-commercial so you just register your copy and download it there okay there is also a download link as well on Google you may have noticed there uh, Softpedia if you want to get it from there you don't have to register then but it's entirely up to you so what we want to do here now is open up easy bcd and we're going to make some changes here um, you can see edit the boot menu we've got windows 10 here only we need to add in an entry for linux and also i want to just quickly repair the mbr there i think uh, just want to do that as well so what we're going to do here is add in an entry here and go to the Linux tab up the top and uh, we want to go to grub2 I'm going to move this down make this mint like so now we need to allocate uh, automatically locate sorry uh, the drive so what we're going to do here is locate that partition for Linux which is the uh, root drive there add this entry in and if we go back here now you'll see it's been added in and also the default drive will now be Windows 10 uh, which will be the countdown for 30 seconds if you don't click anything it will automatically boot into Windows 10 uh, you can change this if you want I'm going to save these changes and also what I'm going to quickly do is repair uh, boot files for this just to make sure that I've sorted that out Now I've got to reboot the system. Now as you can see uh, the boot manager has got Windows 10 and Linux Mint listed here now. Um, so if we wanted to try uh, Linux Mint. And as you can see now we have got Linux Mint booting up. Uh, what I'm going to do is uh, restart the system and try to get into Windows 10 to see if that works. So let me just reboot the system. I'm going to restart. Okay so I've rebooted the system and now you can see we have got options again of Windows 10 and Mint. It's going to push 10 this time. So that's working okay. And there you have it, we're back at the uh, desktop of Windows 10. So, so I'm gonna wrap this one up. My name is Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. If you enjoy these videos guys, then hit that like button. Also hit the subscribe button if you wanna keep up to date when I upload new videos. If you've got any questions or any uh, video requests or anything like that, you can head over to the forums and post on there. It's free to join and uh, join the community. And uh, I shall see you again in the next video. So thanks again for watching, guys, and thanks for your continued support. Bye for now.